<laughs> that is a great story. <laughs> Quite amusing, Dr. Hawking. Some of the collisions might create micro black holes. These would radiate particles in a pattern that would be easy to recognize. Nothing could get out of a black hole, but I discovered that particles can leap out of a black hole. Its speed therefore will be rather uncertain, and can be more than the speed of light, which would allow the particle to escape from the black hole. Sir, I have a plan. A black hole of the mass of a mountain would give off X-rays and gamma rays at a rate of about 10 million megawatts, enough to power the world's electricity supply. It wouldn't be easy, however, to harness a mini black hole. You couldn't keep it in a power station because it would drop through the floor and end up at the center of the earth. Gravity will pull harder on your feet than your head because they are near the black hole. The result is, you will be stretched out longwise and squashed in sideways. You would be torn apart and made into spaghetti before you reach the horizon. About the only way would be to have a black hole in orbit around the Earth. People have searched for many black holes of this mass, but have so far not found any. This is a pity, because if they had, I would have got a Nobel Prize. It might be possible to observe this at the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, at CERN, in Switzerland. This consists of a circular tunnel, 27 kilometers long. Two beams of particles travel around this tunnel in opposite directions, and are made to collide. So, I might get a Nobel Prize, after all. <laughs> The uncertainty principle will not help you now, Stephen. Hmm? All the quantum fluctuations in the universe will not change the cards in your hand. <laughs> I call. You are bluffing. And you will lose. Einstein found the perfect immortal universe. What really interests me, he said, is whether God had any choice in the creation of the universe. But he never lost his faith that nature ought at the root to be simple and beautiful. He saw a single principle that would account for the baffling differences between the forces and the great variety of particles. That simple spiritual principle was the equivalence between the space-time of the universe and its forces, already foreseen by Descartes and Newton, who described those forces of reality as made of vortices of mass and lineal accelerations. The classic worlds of Einstein had no substance, but only two kind of movements that transformed into each other in all the fractal scales of reality. Lineal energies created space and silical masses or clocks of time whose rotational speed or frequency carried information. So mass as ice skaters and hurricanes accelerated faster the closer we came to its centers making the smallest cosmic mass the black hole turning at light speed the fastest, most attractive entity of the universe. Thus, Einstein's black holes never evaporated. On the contrary, all were mass bombs that imploded entropy into information, balancing the universe, making it immortal. The quality that it finds God and answers his question. The universe could not be constructed in any other way but as two moving silical arrows of time, energy, and form. Or else it would all die as the universe of quantum physicists and the Earth will do to disprove the nonsense theories of Mr. Hawking's about black holes when CERN makes them at the so-called black hole factory. 
It will be an easy task. All it takes is to put together the fractal parts of the black hole, the fastest, most attractive top quarks, made by accelerating at light speeds our slower masses. Responding to a massive electrical kick, the proton having an electrical charge begins to accelerate. Moving in the opposite direction are other protons, traveling in an adjacent tube. By the time has been accelerated by a linear accelerator, gained energy circulating around two synchrotrons, and been injected into the Large Hadron Collider, its speed is approaching the speed of light. In this apocalyptic jousting tournament, the lead proton is not alone. Each group numbers more than 100,000 million. In one of the LHC's four giant underground detector caverns, their two paths converge as their Armageddon approaches. The energies created at collisions in the LHC have never occurred since the Big Bang itself, and some of the particles released have not roamed free since that time. They keep growing. Smaller lumps of rock fall onto them. And when it's over, a new world is revealed. Our world. The Earth. A supernova. And now, after spending $13 billion, they cannot stop their machine. So they sponsor quantum physicists to deny Einstein's theory of mass. One of them thinks he has found an invisible particle that is God. CERN has really done a, a splendid job for the particle physics community, and I'd like to add my congratulations. Points, come on! Yeah. What do you mean points? How can something have a mass and a charge and be a point? Well, it takes a little, a few muscles in the mind that haven't been worked on. But if you work on them for a while, uh, you can imagine such an object. It's a little bit like uh, Alice in Wonderland. Remember the Chesser cat sitting on the tree, uh, smiling, and Alice is noticing that the cat is disappearing in front of her eyes? And poof, when the cat disappears, the smile is left behind. You remember that? But Higgs couldn't explain how his god attracted mass, since colliding particles repel each other. Then a kid from high school came up with the solution. God is a celebrity, and particles move where they think. His invisible highness is to find upon arrival to his meeting point that God has disappeared. In front of your eyes, it's shrinking. And finally, it poof, shrinks to a point leaving behind its spin, its charge, its mass, and if it has a smile, leaving behind its smile. That's the idea. A $13 billion idea that Nobel Weinberg called the toilet particle to flush in a vortex of mass of Dr. Einstein as the Earth will be. God, please let us stay in this heavenly hell forever. The Earth didn't smile. The air was filled with the stench of death. The smoke was thick. The sun couldn't crack through. The scent was the smell of burning flesh. 
The burning flesh was your mother. 